told you this before, but it's worth repeating. Where I come from is a town called Dunleary. Most of you probably don't know Dunleary, some of you probably do. It's a coastal town just south of Dublin. And it's got a very strong history and it's got a very strong sense of its own importance, believe me. We boast we've produced many a great person. Bob Galdon, Sinead O'Connor, uh, George Bernard Shaw, and many, many others from Dunleary. I remember when I received my MBE from, he was then Prince Charles, and I was on RTE talking about one of the few Dublin men, being one of the few Dublin men ever to receive an honour from the um, from the Queen, but the Queen wasn't there the day. She cleared off to South Africa and left it to the young lad, uh, Prince Charles. And somebody said to me, what did Prince Charles say to you? And I said, well, when I told him I was from Dunleary, he was humble. <laughs> and that is the sense that leery people have of themselves. Now, not far from Dunleary, just across the border in County Wicklow, is a town called Bray. We did not like Bray. It may have changed now, but at that time we decidedly. Now, if you think up here was bad, if you think the Middle East is bad, or Russia and the Ukraine, you have no idea what the feeling was between Don Leary and Bray. Now, you, if you heard someone from Don Leary or from, some, uh, from Bray, might not <coughs> quite hear the different accent, but believe me, we could hear it. And my father used to always say, never go out to Bray. They're a strange lot. And that's the way Dunleary people live. We never went near Bray. Even they had a lovely seafront, we wouldn't go out there. And dare you marry someone from Bray. But in my family, one of my brothers brought home a girl from Bray and the house nearly exploded. It was a Romeo and Juliet moment, and he eventually married her. She could never say she came from Dunleary, though. But, however, they had a wonderful, and still have a wonderful life together. I'm telling you that because we had stories in our minds about brave people. I no doubt great people had stories in their minds about Dunleary people. And those stories inform us about each other and the unacceptable characteristics of each other. And in our world, people fight over the stories in their mind. I don't believe it's not always over space, or gain, or wealth. Although that's partially true, I believe it's the stories in their mind. And people and their stories, just as they remember and remember who they are as a people. Simon Sharma, the noted historian, had an excellent service on a series on television a number of years ago about the Jews and their story. That the Jewish people, when people try to think, well, who are the Jewish people? That the Jewish people are their story. And that's how they know their story. 
and it's a frightening story. But I personally believe they are not alone. The Irish nation, like most nations, is a construct and it's told within a story. We tell ourselves a story about ourselves. I mean, my father believed that the Hudsons were Irish Aborigines. Now just listen to the name, Hudson. There's nothing less Irish than the name Hudson. It's from Yorkshire. But there's no way my father would accept that. We were not, we were the original of the species because that was the story of how he understood who we are. He wouldn't accept that identity in many ways is a construct. And it's constructed over periods and generations. And we continue that sense of identity by telling stories and the struggle of our people. And it's all the stories in our heads. And those stories grow and grow. And they separate us. The concept and the reality of a nation is absolutely a human construct. It is not something that has had an external existence. We created it. And that applies in my belief, and I may be wrong, but that implies in my belief to all nations, all nations. I'm not saying nations shouldn't exist. It's probably one of the best ways for, the, for people to survive in nation states. As long as they remember, it's a construct. It's something they created. It may be that certain people existed as a tribe and then eventually defined themselves as a people and then as a nation. If you look at the Ukraine, it's been a bit of everything for years throughout its history and finally identify themselves as the Ukrainian people and the nation. In many ways, nationalism is a product of necessity. It constructs a new form of identity and community as a response to urban uprooting and industrialization. It is a response from a frightened people to what they see as globalism. Hence the reason, in my opinion, that nationalism is on the rise throughout Europe and throughout Ireland and throughout Britain. Throughout many, many countries. Because people are frightened that as a people they will disappear. They will become diluted down to a nothing. And yet, we as Christians repeat over and over again, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. We repeat that over and over again. And we could add to that, you are neither English or Irish, French or German, Ukrainian or Russian, we are all one in Jesus Christ. But that would be so hard to do. But to most people, that wouldn't be acceptable, even though it would be enhancing or continuing the flow of what we essentially see, the concept of being one in Jesus Christ. Because in many ways we fused religious belief with nationalism. We have in the world today Islamic nationalism. Most Arab states are defined by Arab nationalism. And when I was growing up in Dublin, we had Catholic nationalism. We firmly believed, we firmly believed that people in Northern Ireland who defined themselves as British were in error. 
both in defining themselves as British and also being members of the Reformed Church. And every day in school, we prayed for United Ireland and we prayed for the uh, conversion of the Protestant people of Ulster to the one true faith. I don't know what happened with those prayers because I ended up a Protestant. I must have sent them back, sent them back the front or whatever. But that's what we did. And if you look at how, getting back to how the Jews see themselves, the Jews 